Hey everybody, welcome to The Bottom Line. We're so glad that you would join us today. And my name is Susan, and this is my husband, Jim. And we're here to talk to you about some powerful truths in the Word of God. That's right. You know, you and I can say of a certainty that the Word of God can change your life because you and I know firsthand that that is true. That is the truth. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's amazing. And, it, and our, our desire is just to help other people see that change can be had by taking the Word of God and incorporating it into your everyday Christian life. Mm -hmm. So the title of what we're going to do today is called Don't Play the Devil's Game. Did you know the devil had a game? Yes, he does. All right. Let's and go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. It says, Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So, obviously, there's something going on that the devil uses, his, his devices, devices. That he uses to take advantage of us. Mm -hmm. And it says, it says we're not ignorant. We're not ignorant. Of his most devices. people are. Okay, so yeah. so maybe we should kind of talk about what those devices well, we'll, are. We'll get to that in okay. just a minute. Okay. Why don't you read the one in Ephesians? Okay, this is the one that describes the devil's game. Okay. Okay, it's Ephesians 6, verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, okay, now, which means strategies. Okay, so the, the, the word wiles there is the word methodia from which we get our word method. Mm -hmm. So that tells you that there is a method to what the devil is doing. Yeah. And if you don't understand that, then you're losing. Mm -hmm. Okay? And there's an interesting scripture in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Okay. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Now, it says here that he is looking to see who he can devour. My question is, how would he know who he could devour? I mean, he, I don't think he can tell by just looking at you, right? So how, how could the devil possibly know who he can get? Well, if it's not by looking at me. It's very simple. The answer is absolutely very simple. Well, what is it? All he has to do is to listen to what you say. say. And then he knows who he, he knows can devour. Who he can devour. It's interesting. That's uh, in the life of Jesus. And we've got several scriptures here. Why don't you start there in Matthew? Okay, so this is Matthew chapter 22, verse 15. The Pharisees went and plotted how they might entangle him in his talk. So, see, they didn't have anything against him. The only way they could get him is to catch him in something he would say. Mm -hmm. the, the New Living Translation says this. Then the Pharisees met together to plot how to trap Jesus into saying something for which he could be arrested. Arrested, yeah. And see, you know, that's, there's nothing new about this. There's nothing you know, new. You, you've heard the okay. saying, there's nothing new that's under right. the sun. Right. And truly there isn't. And, you know, when you think about, you know, what happens in our world today, you know, it's all about capturing something someone said. said. And, oh, you know, that's, that's, that's what right. it's all about. That's right. And so the devil is, you know, just like that. Mm -hmm. He's just going about doing that. Mark chapter 12, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Then they sent to him some of the Pharisees and Herodians to catch him in his words. Yeah, see, there you have it again. Catch him in his words. Yeah, so if Jesus had been on the earth today... He could have posted something on Twitter, right? Or Facebook. Or Facebook. That could be used against him. That could be used against him. That's right. Luke eleven fifty four, Lying in wait for him and seeking to catch him in something he might say that they might accuse him. Yeah. All right, won't you read Luke twenty twenty? Okay, so they watched him and they sent spies who pretended to be righteous that they might seize on his words in order to deliver him to the power and the authority of the governor. Isn't that good? Man, they're just watching and... That's right. And, and look at that. They're pretending 
to be righteous. Yeah. Does that sound familiar? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's just and what goes on today. In Luke 20, 26, <clears throat> but they could not catch him in his words in the presence of the people, and they marveled at the, his answer and kept silent. So we see here that, that they were going about trying to catch Jesus in something he would say that they could use against him mm -hmm. because that's all they had to use against him would be something he would say. say. And what I'm telling, telling you today is, is no, it's no different today. Mm -hmm. The devil is trying to catch you in something <laughs> that you say that he can use against you. So, so when we read that in 1 Peter 5, 8, where the devil was going about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, the way he's going to know is because he's listening. He's to listening, what you that's say. right. So, you know, I know uh, uh, here, I don't know, it's been a week or so, or maybe two or three weeks ago, there's areas in my life that, uh, to me, could be better than what they are. Mm -hmm. And so I decided one, one night as I was going to bed, I said to myself, Okay. Tomorrow, Jimmy? when I get up, I'm going to follow myself around mm -hmm. and listen to what I'm saying. Yeah, just pay attention. And you know, I was astounded. I was astounded. I mean, I wasn't cussing and I wasn't doing it, but I was, but I was saying things that were not necessarily line up to the Word of God. Yeah, or maybe you were saying things that were not an encouragement to yourself. That's right. You know, we beat ourselves up so many times. Right. Our own words, you know, we'll just turn on ourselves and talk to ourselves in a bad way. Oh, yes. yes. So. And put yourself down. And, mm -hmm. and, and when you do that, the devil can seize on that, and he will add to it and use it against you. Mm -hmm. I like this in Mark chapter 11, verse <clears throat> uh, 12. 12. It says, Now the next day, when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not yet the season for figs. And in response, Jesus said to it. He's talking Jesus to the to tree. It. Jesus is talking to a tree. Mm -hmm. let, me say, let me say that one more time. <laughs> Jesus is talking to a tree. Mm -hmm. That's right. Jesus said to it. Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his, high, and his disciples it's heard it. So, if it's okay for Jesus to talk to trees, mm -hmm. then it must be okay for me to talk to trees. <clears throat> See, I noticed this in this verse. In, in verse 14, <clears throat> previously it said, you know, he found nothing there because it wasn't the season for figs. And then it says, in response, it's almost like, the fig tree was talking to him, but we know the fig tree doesn't That's talk. Right. So it was in response to what he saw there that he said this, let nobody eat fruit from you ever again. That's right. So that tells me that it's okay to talk to a tree. Mm -hmm. It's okay to talk to a storm. It's okay to talk to lack. What about sickness? It's okay sickness. to talk to sickness. It's okay. It's okay to talk to thing because they can hear you and his disciples his heard disciples it. heard it and we know that as you go into mark chapter 11 verse like uh 21 22 the next day they came by and peter said lord look the tree that you cursed has withered away mm -hmm. and that's when jesus said that whosoever have faith in god that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Mm -hmm. Now then, here's, here's something interesting about that. He didn't say <clears throat> things good or bad. Mm -hmm. Whatever you say, say, whatever you believe in your heart and say with your mouth is what you get. Yeah, and you know, we've, we've heard this before. In that particular verse, when you look at it, you realize the saying is emphasized more than the believing. That's right. That's you know, right. So you got to, because, because whatever you believe is going to come out of your mouth. That's right. So you don't have to emphasize the believing, but you need to say. You need to say it. What you believe. And, and see, that's the reason that you and I talk so much about confession. Mm 
Mm -hmm. and we when we're talking confession, most people immediately go to the confession of sin, which you should confess your sins, mm -hmm. but you should also confess the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, you get up in the morning and you say, Father, I thank you that today you are Jehovah Rapha. You, sir, are the Lord my healer. Mm -hmm. You say, Father, I thank you today that I choose to serve the Lord my God. And you, sir, bless my bread and my water, and you take sickness from the midst of you. So what am I doing? I'm, I'm saying things coming from my heart. I'm believing them in the, in the, with my heart, <clears throat> saying them with my mouth, and they will come to pass. Mm -hmm. Right? So we yeah. need to understand that. We need to understand that. So, and there's a lot we don't understand. That's right. There yeah. is a lot. You know, and, and when you read, read the New Testament, especially these verses that we're talking about in Mark 11, you know, you look at these and you think, well, wow, it just sounds so, just like, you should just yep. be able to do this. And so, you know, of course, there's a lot of things involved, you know, in having a prayer answered. You know, on that particular day when Jesus was talking, you know, he said, you know, you believe whatever you believe, you can ask and you'll receive. But then after that, he started talking to them about, and if you stand praying, forgive. See, and there's another little component to this, you know, that you, you need to let go of right. unforgiveness, right. you know. And so there are several things, you know, when, when you decide, you know, you're in that place and you think, you know, I'm, I'm going to, God's going to have to move on my behalf for this. <clears throat> yes. And when you get in that place and you're seriously looking for him and then you need to, you need to go here and read this and meditate on it and think about it and then, and then move forward. Right. And do Numbers this. chapter 14, <clears throat> verse 26. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation who complain against me? I have heard the complaints which the children of Israel make against me. Say to them, As I live, says the Lord, just as you have <clears throat> spoken, just as you have said, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do, do to, to you. you. Ooh. Now, and so what did they say? What had they been saying? They'd been saying that they wished they had never left Egypt. They that so forth and so on, mm -hmm. that they were better off back there. So you need to be careful what you say, right? That's right. All right. Matthew chapter 15, verse <clears throat> 15. Then Peter answered and said to him, Explain this parable to us. So Jesus said, Are you still without understanding? Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? Now listen to this. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man. That's the reason that Susan and I talk so much about what you let into your heart. heart. Because whatever is in your heart sets the boundaries for your life. And the, re the way the boundaries for your life are set <coughs> is by what you say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Isn't that true? Yeah, that is true. I mean, you know, because yeah. the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm -hmm. So okay. we need to. We, you have to. You have to guard. You know, your mama was right. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's a powerful song it right is. there. It is. Yeah. Okay, let's go to Matthew chapter 6. I, I like this particular passage of Scripture. <clears throat> Jesus, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. He just got through saying, don't worry. He did say that. What you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body. What you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his statue? So why would you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon, in all of his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, in which today it is and tomorrow will be thrown into the oven, how much more shall he clothe you, O you of little faith? Now then, Listen to this very carefully. Verse 31. Jesus said, Therefore, do not worry, say. Saying. Do not worry, say. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever noticed this in your life? 
if you start worrying about something, you start saying, you start talking about it. Mm -hmm. he, he, right there, he says, don't do that. Yeah. He says, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? And those all, are so those are such common everyday things. They are. They that are. that a lot of times we do get over into this place where we worry about this. Well, what am I going to wear? What am I going to wear? You know, just just don't. don't. <laughs> just Therefore, don't. do not worry saying. Saying. Do not worry saying. So the words that you and I speak are extremely important. Can I read the rest of that? You can. Okay, he says, for after all these things the Gentiles seek. Your heavenly Father knows you need all these things. But first, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. So don't worry about tomorrow. I love this part. Tomorrow will worry about its own things. That's right. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Uh, yeah. that's, that's exactly right. I like to say it, it's kind of like this. You, you have a bucket. A bucket. A bucket. Okay. You know what a bucket is. I know what a bucket okay. is. You I have, have a bucket. bucket. In fact, I have a bucket. And in this bucket, you have some apples. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, that being the case, mm -hmm. what can you take out of that bucket? Apples. You can't, what about oranges? Nope. Why not? There's none in there. What no about, oranges what there. What about grapes? Could you? What? No, I, no. Why not? Because this is my apple bucket. So, because there's not any grapes in there, you can only take out what's in what you have already put in. Okay. Same way uh, about our heart, you can only take out what you have already put in. Mm -hmm. And the, we know that that Proverbs chapter four talks about the fact that the boundaries of our life are established by what is in our heart. That is that is such a, that's an amazing fact. It is. Right there. It is. You know, you know I mean, you, you know, you can just look around at your, you know, your friend list. And, you know, you can see people that do great things and people that don't do great things. And then you can look at people and you think, man, this person should have really, and you think, why in the world did this one not and that one did? And the only difference in reality is the heart. The heart, that's right. You know, they had boundaries within themselves, you know, that they just couldn't push past. And, you know, you spend, you, you would spend a lifetime um, unraveling and figuring out how to fix these things so that you could move beyond them. That's right. And, you know, and, you know, we talk so much about, um, you know, we're talking about words today, but, you know, you're talking about your heart at the same time. And, you know, when you, when you go to the New Testament and you see what Paul said about you have weapons of your warfare and they're not carnal, they're mighty through God, pulling down the strongholds and imaginations. And these are things that get all messed up inside of you. Oh, yes. And then these are things that you start talking about. And so... You know, we were we we heard a, a message the other day when we were watching um, Rick Renner's program on TV, and he was talking about this, and he was saying that you know there's more than one kind of imagination. He said there's one that's logical, and there's one that's not logical. And so, you know, I started out talking to you about why did this group succeed, and this group did not. Sometimes you might have a very logical imagination that makes good sense to you that puts the boundaries on something that you could have actually done. Right. And anyway, his his whole thing was one of the big things that causes people to have a logical imagination that should be cast down would be where money is involved. Right. Yeah, because a lot of times, you know, you'll have something that, you know, out there that God has really placed on your heart to go do, but you think, man, I, I can't afford that. And so you, you, you think like that, and you think, you know, I'm a good little steward of my money, and I know I can't go beyond this, and I know I'm not going to. And so you limit yourself, though, by that thought, mm -hmm. you know, instead of saying, well, with God, all things are possible. I believe the money will come. I'm, you know, we don't. Right. We, we just kind of lock down. 
But anyway, it's interesting to see, you know, like, and, and you might look around at your own self, you know, I've, I've looked at myself and I thought, man, you should have already done this and you should have already done that. Well, why didn't you? Well, because of your heart. Because it's it real was, simple. It's got these, yeah, fences. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you have illogical. Yeah. In other words, an illogical stronghold would be a person that in, in reality is a very skinny person. Yeah. But they see themselves as, as fat and overweight. Yeah. But in reality, they're not. But they have mm -hmm. a stronghold that says they are. Mm -hmm. And you just, you know. You, you, you and, you know, and, you know, see, we've seen that played out in our modern day world with yeah. people with anorexia. Yeah. You know, because they get so convinced. That's right. And then they will not eat. That's right. And it's a mess, yeah. you know. So, but yeah. See, you know, you just listen to people talk. Words. You ever had, had say, how are you doing today? Well, it's Monday. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's not that's, that was what was in their heart. Yeah. Have you ever heard anybody say, well, you know, if it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all. I've heard Why that. Why would they say that? That's what's in their heart. Yeah. You need to change what's in your, the only way to change the way you're living is to change what's in your heart. Yeah. There's a, our, our granddaughter takes dance lessons or whatever you call it. And uh, in the in the foyer there where she goes, there's a picture. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's in, in this little picture, ballerinas. It's some ballerinas, and little bitty and ballerinas. All of them except one are doing their little thing like this, yeah. and one of them just sitting there like this. Yeah. The caption on the picture says, "It's not who you are that's holding you back, but it's who, who you think, think you are." You are. Mm -hmm. You see. Yeah. You, you are. You are a child of God. You have to change the way you think mm -hmm. about yourself because I promise you, God sees you totally different than you see yourself. Mm -hmm. That's right, because every time he looks at you and you've confessed Jesus as your Savior, he sees the blood uh, of right. the Lamb. He sees a complete He sees project. righteousness. That's right. Yeah. Right. Let's read this scripture in Matthew chapter 12. Okay. Verse 33. Jesus said, Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. fruit. In other words, mm -hmm. people will know you by the fruit coming out of your life. That's right. Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account in the day of judgment. For, now listen to this. Okay. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Mm -hmm. So it, all, it goes back to what we started off at the first. They were trying to catch Jesus in something he would say that mm -hmm. they could use against Jesus. Him. That's right. And it all goes back to what's in your heart. Mm -hmm. in and in First Peter we read that the devil goes about mm -hmm. like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. And my, the way I look at that is if I never say anything. <laughs> Just never say anything. <laughs> he doesn't know. That's right. <laughs> the only way he can know if he can devour me is by what I would say. say. Yeah. Isn't that true? That's true. I mean, I know you, you, and you're thinking, well, that's just too simple. Well, see, it has to be simple for us to understand it. Mm -hmm. That's right. If it was complicated, a lot of us wouldn't, wouldn't be able to do it. That's okay? right. So yeah. it, it has to be simple. And that's just as simple as simple can be. Mm -hmm. Remember, Jesus talked to a fig tree. Mm -hmm. He also talked to wind and waves. Yeah, he did. So if Jesus can talk to things like that, then you and I can talk to things mm -hmm. like that. Isn't that true? That's right. So, and well, we can talk to ourselves. Yeah, and I mean, the thing is, if you're going to talk to yourself, you ought to be building yourself up. Mm -hmm. You ought not to be tearing yourself down. That's right. I mean, you have, you know, have you ever thought, have you ever said to yourself, well, I am so stupid? Well, why would you say that? I know we do that. Why would you say that? You, you because ever, we think we are. Have you ever heard? That's why we say. Have it. you ever said you said, "Well, nothing ever works out for me"? Why don't? Why? Why would you say? That? Yeah. The reason you say this—that's what you believe in your heart. Mm -hmm. And I read somewhere, it's a, a 
the guy's name is uh, uh, what is his name? Jim Richards, mm -hmm. and he 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 uh, has done research in this area, and he says that whatever you believe about yourself, okay, you attract you it. are attracting people to treat you that way. Yeah, yeah, you've taught me that before, and I think that's exact, so, exactly right. I mean, you know, yeah. uh, for instance, say, well, what are you talking about? Well, there's an instance in Judges chapter six where there's a young man named Gideon. And he, is, the Midianites are coming and stealing all their food. So he has a little bit of grain he's hiding mm -hmm. because he's scared. Yeah. And, and the angel of the Lord appears to him and he says this. He says, Hail, thou mighty man, man of valor. valor. And I'm sure Gideon was thinking, who in the world are you That's talking right. to? That's right. You got the wrong guy. You to, wait a minute. You must, you must have had mistaken me for somebody else. And he but explained see, it. Yeah. See, here's the thing about it. God saw him as a mighty man of valor. And you say, well, how do you know that? Because that's what he said. That's what the angel said, yeah. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. think God would have just made that up. He, that's what God believed about mm -hmm. Gideon, even if Gideon did not believe that about himself. That's right. That's the way it really was. And at the end of his life, he, he was still... He did come around. He was, no, I don't know that he ever did actually know it. But it was explained to him more than one time. Oh, yes. You know, yes. so that, yeah. But it's that heart thing. That's right. Whatever is, it, whatever is in your heart is mm -hmm. what's going to rule your life. Mm -hmm. That's the reason it's so important that you be careful what you hear. Mm -hmm. Because whatever you hear goes into your heart. Whatever you see goes into your heart. That's right. So let's talk for just a minute about partnering with us here on the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Just twenty dollars a month will do it. Twenty dollars a month. We're asking you to, to to consider doing twenty dollars a month toward the bottom line to help us, and we would certainly certainly appreciate you. Say, well, what do I get for that? Susan and I will pray for you every day. Pray the blessings of God into your life every day. And that would be the most powerful partnership. Right. And remember this: Jesus said, "If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth." And the truth, the truth will shall set, set you free. free.